734. Uh, if you'll all rise, please, I'll leave the mic solution. Item 4B, copy of the civility statement. Communicate clearly and concisely with the respect for the time of others. Listen objectively, carefully consider the opinions of others. Understand the counterproductive effects of disruptive, demeaning, or intimidating behaviors. Understand and respect district policies and procedures. And maintain the respect for the rich history of the district and the efforts of others who have served in the past. Item 5, closed session. Report on action taken in closed session. The board will consider and may act on any of the following items in closed session. Any action taken in closed session will be reported in open session as required by law. Closed session may be called at any time during a formal meeting by a motion of the Board of Education for the purpose of discussing personnel problem, pupil problem, a purchase consultation on a legal problem with an attorney and with employee organizations in regard to salaries or fringe benefits. All formal action involving such matters must be made in open meeting. The items are conference with the labor negotiators, B, public employee discussion, C, conference legal counsel, or D, student matters. It's my duty to reform that no action was taken in closed session. Item six, public comments. Public comments and recognition and reports. Do we have any comments? Yes, we do, Mr. Jorgensen. The I read that you know, submit the request to speak to the Board of Trustees. Cards have got those located at the back of the agenda. It can be on an agendized or a non-agendized item to the superintendent prior to the meeting, which we have. Not more than three minutes are allotted to any one speaker and no more than 20 minutes on the same subject. This portion of the agenda is for comments, recognitions, and reports to the board. It is not intended to be a question and answer period. If you have questions for the board, please provide the board president with a written copy and an administrator will provide answers at a later date. So we have a moment, please. Okay, in no particular order, I'm going to go ahead and put them by their content. The first speaker would be uh, Ms. Pamela Walter. When you come up to the mic, please state your name for the record. Pamela Walter, Acton Town Council member. So I'm going to start out with a little announcement from the Acton Town Council. Um, our meeting was canceled this past week, number one, for Monday being a holiday. Wednesday, it was canceled because of the storm. So our next meeting is this coming Monday night at six o'clock at the library. We do have um, the county, well, I should say this first, We're in, we are now in a Zoom process. We, it took us a while to get up to the library to be having our meetings on Zoom. But they are on Zoom now, but it's hard for people to know, you know when we're meeting and what time because of the cancellation. So this coming Monday night, we've got Edison will be on Zoom. So all of our questions that we've got with Edison and also Public Works, as far as I know, and Regional Planning. So there's some important things happening in Acton with regards to the county. So I'm inviting everyone to please get on the Zoom if you can or attend the meeting and then you can, you know, participate a little better. My second response is 6 from PM. 6 p.m., correct? 6. Monday. Monday. So. At the library. Big screen. It's it's wonderful. We're, we're very happy with how we can do our meetings now. My second, that was my public service announcement, I guess. Um, I'm a 32-year resident of Acton, 28 years as a business owner, <coughs> and the feedback that's coming back to me personally, people, my clients, past clients and people are contacting me about the school and what's happening. 
I'm not going to say anything about what people are saying to me, but I'd like, like you all to know it's not positive that the comments that I'm getting, and I'm very sad. You all know that I was president of the Acton Dulce Brokers Association for 20 plus years. We raised a lot of money for this school district. I don't want to cry about it, but I'm damn close. That's where I am, folks. Thank you for hearing me out. I think we've all been asleep as far as what board members do. And we've woken to the fact that you do work for us. And when you guys have a community of teachers and students and parents screaming at you to keep a principal when there was no discipline for him, there could have been things that were worked out, and by one vote, that changed everything. And I think that we're done. I know two of you are not running for re-election, and you're up for recall. I'm pretty sure you've heard it through the rumor mill, but we want you to resign. If, you know, if not, we're definitely the recall process is going for you. Because, do you know who my daughter is? Well, you probably do now from the last meeting. Miss Mendoza over there. But you don't know what's best for her. I do, and my husband does. None of you know what's best for our children. So when we are all here screaming at you to make a decision for our children because we know what's best for them, and you guys don't listen, that's a problem within this community. We haven't forgotten. Um, there are things that we don't want in our schools. We don't want the wellness center that people don't seem to know about. We don't want pregnancy tests or any off-color sexual exploitation on our school campuses. We don't need our school campuses to be uh, medical facilities. There should be no longer the fraudulent COVID testing that is actually really bad for our kids, um, and they don't work. We don't need there to be vaccination sites on campus. We don't need the nurse acting as if our campus is a urgent care. And there's just, there's a lot of things that you guys are making decisions on that we're not standing for anymore. Dr. Sahakian, I feel this is a stepping stone for you. You don't belong in this community. You don't belong in our school board. And the other two of you I know are, are not running for re-election. And that is what we want as a community. It's not where we're sick of it. We've learned that we have the power. The community actually is the people that have the power, and we're going to use it. Hello all, board, stay, community stay members, stay, stay. I am Sadie Mendoza. Thank you. Um, I was asked here today to speak for not only my kids, right, my peers, because that's what I am, I'm a representative. But I was also asked here for our teachers or staff members. They asked me, and they actually gave me a couple points today. My first one is that Dr. Murphy, we all believe, was wrongfully terminated. And if that was a personal thing, then it was. But if it wasn't, then it wasn't, right? Because we don't know. And I don't think we're really asking for the main point of that. We're just asking if there was something he did. Because we do know it's a small town, right? We have a lot of rumors and stuff going on. But, um,. If it was something Dr. Murphy did, okay, great. But if it was just something personal, then we don't think that's great. Um, the next point is that um, our voices should be heard, right? And as we were, right, was it about two weeks ago, um, all of us kids were here. And I think that's my big problem is that as us kids were here, we're standing up for something, which our generation doesn't do anymore, right? Everyone's more involved with their phones, and everyone would rather sit on their couch watching the news outer bank season than we are to do anything else, right? But no, we came here. We came here to help our principal that has done so much for us. And we just know that what we said didn't have a didn't have a ultimatum for you guys, right? It didn't fall onto your ears, right? It it was like wax. Your ears were covered with wax and we were not able to express yourself to you guys because that just wasn't going to happen because your brains were already set on it, right? Our brains are a powerful tool and if you already have your mindset on something, nothing's going to change that. Um, my next point is you guys were elected. 
why were you elected? You guys were elected for us as a community, right? As here for our kids, for my friends. That's what you guys are here for. And not even that, it's here as the US, right? Because maybe this is a small, small part of it, right? But we are all still here connected as Americans. And I think that's a big point we have to go on. Because how are you supposed to say that you care about us when we're all supposed to be connected and us as kids do not feel that? And I know from all my friends what we've been saying, and just like as we said, non-positive things, to say the least. Um, and it's just, it's hard. Because when we fight for something, people always try to say that the good guys win. I'm not saying that you guys are the bad guys. I'm just saying you guys weren't hearing us. And that's a really hard thing. Um, our next point is that we will not let another unfortunate situation just go back past us, right? Because I've heard, I mean, I wasn't around, but <laughs> I heard that just things like this have happened in the past, where maybe swept under, under, the, under the rug, or many other things, right? So how are we supposed to sit here and say that you guys have our backs when we don't, right? You are guys who are taking your umbrella in a horrible rainstorm. So how are we supposed to sit here and respect you guys if you guys are not respecting us back? Um, we also should know, you guys should know, is that there was a petition that was signed with over 670 signatures, right? This is a small community, and that's a lot of people, right? So, and it's growing too. By the day, it's more signatures are getting signed for Dr. Murphy, right? Because it, maybe there is, I know that there's a couple people who don't like them, and that's okay, because guess what? There's always gonna be a bad guy to sell a story, right? It's just life, that's how it works. So if you guys want to go off that, that's fine. But nothing should be personal in a business matter, right? I've grown up in a business my whole life. So how is that allowed? It's not. And um, just knowing that our upcoming elections are coming up, and I know a couple things are going on. I'm not going to really go off that because one, I'm not able to vote. And two, I don't think it's really my place. So I'm not really going to touch on that. But I know our community leaders right here in this room. Because maybe they're not you up there on this board right here, but they're uh, uh, they're here. These are our parents, right? The friends for our parents. They're the ones who make things happen for us kids. I just that's all I have to say. Thank you very much. I am six gold spotlight doctors on Is that it? Hang on. Is that it? I have something I would like to say. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of people here. We're here to live. We're here. If you have something to say, please. There we go. Speaker Liz Sotelo, please state your name for the record.
as now at the end of the elected term or contract, therefore the students, parents, and staff of Vasquez High School hereby call for the immediate resignation of Superintendent Shakakian and Board President Jorgensen and Board Members Jensen and I'm sorry. False graph. False graph. Mm -hmm. That was said to me by my community. Me myself, I have reached out to some members and some have responded. Thank you to the ones that have. Jorgensen, the community doesn't want you. We, we don't represent our children. You did at one point and that's why you're sitting there. But now, you gotta go.
six B, uh, Golden Spotlight, Dr. Zahn. Mr. Jorgensen, um, we don't have a Golden Spotlight for this evening. Okay. Seven A out of representative. Sheldon Sparks out of representative. Um, <clears throat> have two weeks to uh, process what transpired from the last meeting, and as you can see, the residual is still here. Um, I think I mentioned in my comments last time that this is going to be felt for a little while. Um, this is not going to go away. This is not one of those events where you have the crowd show up and, you know, and uh, make the noise and then the, the setting is just dissipated. Um, I think the hardest part for Ada, and I did you know, a lot of soul searching with him, um, this was a hot topic. It was, um, it's frustrating to continue to bring you issues that are, affect our everyday job. Since I've been that representative, I've spoke on the need of consistent leadership. Some of you guys have been on the board a long time, and I've had 17 principals since I've been here, between the three schools. There's no leadership there. How do you, how do you, how do you sit there and advance scores? How do you change uh, culture? How do you enforce discipline when you have no consistency? And this board is responsible for that. Adam members have lost faith in the leadership of this board. We don't have the confidence that you will make the right decision because somewhere down the line, it stopped being about the kids and it started being about ego. And you can't run an organization like that. You cannot. It will devour itself from the inside. And the crazy part is, is what transpired with Mike Murphy, for me, is not about Mike Murphy. It's about how people are treated in this district. And it starts with leadership. It starts with you. When I have board members eviscerating the newspaper lady for quoting you, it seems petty. And what it does is it starts creating a culture amongst the, the, these four walls. People hear that. And they go, oh, if that man can do it, then I can do it as well. And so our words matter. I've told you that from the day I stood up here. Your words matter. And when you sit there and you say it's about the kids, look at I truly want it to be about the kids. That is the only reason why I'm in this district. But don't tell me. Show me. Your words are hollow. Don't just believe the ad representative where somewhere down the line my words, my comments have become less impactful. I stand with full authority with my union. And we stand in solidarity and say this leadership is lacking. It is almost impossible to do our job. What they ask teachers to do on a daily basis is incredibly difficult. It's even more impossible when you have leadership that is making bad decisions from renewing that charter school that we're all of a sudden we're taking, we're already bleeding ADA, and we're going to allow another charter school to come into our district to suck more kids away. And that decision caused us to cut staff, which caused us to not service our community. Your decisions reverberate. It means something. When you cut a, a principal loose, and look, this is not the first time that this has happened. This is not the first time. When you sit here long enough, you start seeing patterns. Did the same thing to Dan Andrews. Let him loose June, January, or June 10th, June 15th, when you knew right away that you were cutting him out. 
Why do I have district officials micromanaging graduation and the senior walk and not including my principal? Because they knew what they were going to do. This was purposeful. And you all are accountable for that. Because it creates a culture in this community. It creates a culture. You've raised another generation of students who are now going, this board doesn't listen to me. They have their own agenda. Now, look at me. I don't come up here and lecture you because I feel like it's a career advancement. I come up here because I'm vested. I come up here because I give my heart and my soul, and every other Adam member does too. We're here, not because of the money. We're not here because of the ideal working conditions from the toxic environment that is being projected from this leadership. We're here for students and to make a difference in our community. And we need people to start pulling in the same direction. Because if we don't, we'll continue this down this path. We're 10 years from now, we'll have a, a, a parent who's lived their entire life. I've been here since 2000, and we see the same thing over and over and over. Okay, let's break that. Let's stop right now. You're all intelligent, smart people. People believed in you. They voted for you because they thought you could do an excellent job. They have full confidence and faith in you. Me personally, sir, when I heard you were elected, oh my God, I did backflips. Finally. I have somebody who understands what it's like in the day-to-day -day growth. And you had kids here two weeks ago begging for you. I want to know, who was, the, who was the voices that were against Dr. Murphy? Who were those voices? Who were those loud voices that you heard? And did they get due process? Because in the paper, I read somewhere he was let go because he had his due process. I know what due process looks like in this district. Believe me, I've been investigated by this board several times. Due process is you get a disgruntled employee, a disgruntled coach, a disgruntled community member to run to their favorite board member to take up their cause. And all of a sudden, they're sitting there doing their little investigation. And they don't come to the people that are around. Did you go to any of the people at Vasquez and talk to them? Did you talk to the people that were in that meeting? There were other people that were part of that meeting. Did you talk to them personally? Did you ask questions of them? Did you ask the staff, hey, some other people were in there. What was their perspective? I would like to hear their written statement. Did you even do give due process? You didn't because you have it on any other person who you investigate. I know exactly how you treat us because I'm living it. This job is hard enough, and I so desperately want to partner with a board leadership that puts kids first, period. Last week was not about kids. Last week was about adults. I know I'm coming at you strong. My frustration level is high. It's been a tough year. COVID has just kicked our butts. I hope in your next, what, you got, we're done January, right? I hope that you just haven't mailed it in. Please, we need committed people who are working with us. Okay, this vote was three to two. That means it was politics. There's every, every vote I ever hear, it's five no, five oh, five oh. This one was three two. Please don't give up on us. We need your leadership, your voice. You have to have your own perspective and speak it, please. Thank you for your time tonight. Representative is absent. Superintendent Hilton Hawkins. Thank you, Mr. Jorgensen. So I'm just going to wait for Ms. McCauley. She's going to queue up the superintendent report. Okay, thank you. No pressure. To my right. Uh, this was a few weeks back, but on Sunday, June 5th, I had the great privilege of seeing the harmonic bronze. We have a couple of pictures up. Um, seeing the Harmonic Bronze in person, their end of the year program within our community held at 
Metal Ark was not only exceptional, exceptional, but very well attended. Congratulations to the Harmonic Bronze for their time, their energy, and above all, dedication over multiple, multiple years. And the students that were actually in Harmonic Bronze for multiple years were recognized by uh, Mr. Rowland. And speaking of Mr. Rowland, most importantly, we thank him for his commitment, leadership, and efforts with Harmonic Bronze. Mr. Rowland, you are truly one of a kind. I think the next slide, Ms. McCauley. There's a couple more pictures, a few more pictures there. And one more slide over. It's a little bit edited version of um, the Harmonic Bronze end of the year program. I know we missed them for the winter uh, performance, unfortunately, just due to COVID and, and so forth so on. But if you could just bear with us, um, they did an outstanding job. It's edited a few minutes. I'd like to go ahead and show this for our community this evening. So. Popular demand. We were thrilled to be able to coordinate the 2022 Senior Walk on June 8th. Thank you to VHS, High Desert, and Meadowlark. Thank you most importantly to the graduating seniors for inspiring our future Mustangs. In the next slide, Ms. McCauley, I think we have a little snippet put together, put together for the senior walk. They had their Mustang gear, so kudos to all that were involved. Um, Lastly, summer school is in full swing. Dates for summer school, June 21st through July 19th. Of course, July 4th, a holiday. School will not be in session. Uh, two programs are, are running at, at the moment. At Meadowlark, we have our preschool through seventh grade for extended school year, as well as eighth through 11th um, extended school year at VHS, plus our general education courses, eighth through 11th at VHS. Visiting the sites, both Meadowlark and Vasquez, this past Tuesday for opening of summer school, everything was very smooth. Thank you to everybody involved, and thank you more, most importantly to the staff at both sites. That concludes my report. Thanks, Mr. Trugas. Thank you, Dr. Sotkin. Uh, item 7B, COVID-19 reports. Dr. Sotkin. Yes, so COVID-19 cases across LA County seem to have stabilized, although still quite high. Within the past two weeks, uh, Acton, Agua, Dulce, surrounding areas, we saw 42 new cases reported. In our school community, we had three positive cases reported to us since June 8th. And the Department of Public Health, DPH for short, released High Desert from its outbreak status as of June 17th. And we have officially moved over to primary health and are no longer taking tests through the color laboratories per our nurse in the nurse carry. All students and staff who need to be tested must register on the primary health platform. We'll continue to test employees as required and students throughout summer schools throughout summer school on Mondays only. Again, the home kits are available at district offices from 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Monday through Friday. Thank you. Uh, I have seven submissions. Do you have any submissions, Dr. Sock? No, sir. No submissions. No? I have any board member comments. So we'll start with Ms. Jensen. Thank you. Um, I just want to say that I was able to attend the graduations also, and I thank you. But one of the things that really stood out, I have the um, privilege of standing next to, to uh, Nicole Salcedo and Tiffany, um, and how many comments the kids were making about, thank you, I couldn't have done it without you, and so glad you made it. We knew you could do it. So. Um, Yes, 100% of graduation, we should be very proud of that. But I do want to just recognize the things that I was hearing up there, the kids that were just really, um, really pouring their hearts out to the, to the both of them. So I just want to thank them too as well, as well as all the teachers. It takes everyone to um, help our kids through that. So thank you for that. Always great to hear the bronze harmonic. Mr. Rowland does his fabulous job. I'm always amazed every time I hear them. Just a small town could have so much talent around themselves. So, um, that was very impressive. And I, I wanted to thank Mrs. Van Ornum as well. She had a great eighth grade graduation. It was great to be outside, you know, masks, and be um, able to have some of those celebrations again. And I look forward to coming by and um, seeing the summer school. So that's all I have to say. Thank you. Go pros on. Okay, uh, first, business wise, I attended on behalf of the board the final LAXTA of Los Angeles County trustees association meeting it was 
basically the seating of the new officers. I'm happy to report that the um, north end of the Los Angeles Valley, um, the Los Angeles area is well represented this time. Sometimes we have a lot of inner city things, we have a lot of west side representation. So you tend to um, have focus on things that aren't really the rural thing and the, you know, the kind of things that we might think about. So um, we've got good representation on the board of directs, directors of that, so that's good. Um, I want to tell you that today is the 50th anniversary of Title IX programs. Uh, Bernice Bunny Sandler uh, got her doctorate in education and took up seeking equity um, because in 1970, about 58% of females graduated high school and only 8% went on to college. So um, it went far beyond a theoretical thing. You saw it permeating funding, which is, I don't know if many of you know this, but the uh, softball field at Vasquez High School, the new softball field was funded with Title IX funding, meaning that not all the money goes to the boys' baseball team, but so um, Bonnie Sandler was a hero when it comes to one. Guys, I'm not going to speak to your comments, but kind of. So watch the movie later, because you've got some sped things I'm going to talk about. So just make a note about that. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll get into that. I want to get to the good stuff first. Um, I want to talk about the Wellness Center. First off, in my time on the board, I'm, I'm going to tell you why I came onto the board first. Um, when I came onto the board, there were people stealing money doing charter schools. So when I ran, it was restore, uh, reduce attention to out of boundary charters. What are we doing sponsoring kids in San Bernardino and taking money from? them when we don't even know who they are. Number two was restore focus on local students. And number three was restore our, the good name of our district in the greater educational marketplace. When I hit the board, Newhall was suing us over Einstein. Everybody was suing us. No one, LACO, nobody wanted anything to do with us. We were the blight of whatever. So that's why I'm here. I'm a cleanup man. I don't educate children. I'm not a principal. I sit up here to run policy and make sure that this is clean. And I'm on a little rant today because I got my own rant. You've heard me telling you that somebody that stood at that, that very microphone right there, two people who had the blessing of this town and its leaders and the superintendent at the time stood up there and lied to me while I was being beat up by my fellow board members and accosted. I would rather be hear from kids who are very passionate that I can look at and say, where'd, that, where'd the one young lady go? She needs to go to law school. That's where she needs to go. It doesn't upset me with these kids. In their world, their perception is what their perception is. It's not their perception that I'm going to put people in jail for stealing $80 million. They stood right there and took a beat in this community. Well, guess what happened to them? I told you 50 million. They stole 80 million dollars. How do you steal 80 million dollars of the kids' money? How do you do that? You put it into shell companies that you're running in Newport Beach or whatever, and then all of a sudden you're a hero because you give the money back. You know what these people got for stealing 80 million dollars? It's right here. House arrest, ankle bracelet, and their Newport mansion. They got nothing. Time spent. One of these people, three-time loser. There are people out there today getting arrested for stealing gasoline to get to work. And if you get the wrong judge, you're going to the state penitentiary, son. What do these people get? Nothing. It's all right here. I came here to stop that. I did that. There's no reason for me to be up here anymore. I'm going to serve my term. That's it. I'm getting old. I might die before then. The stress ain't killing me. Don't worry about it. But this is what I came here for. They're all walking off. One of them 
one of them had done this before. He was in our boardroom, even before the rest of these people. He's been three-time loser on this. He was paid $1.5 million to set up the deal. So I'm going to get with you people, and I'm going, to, I'm, I'm going to pretend the fact is they were hiding this in money meant for teachers. There were no teachers. It was going right in their pocket. So this guy comes in, rouses you all up, tells you this is happening, steals $1.5 million, and you know what his fine was? He had to pay back $500,000. That's a pretty good deal, right? Wow. That's why I was here. It's over. The LA Times did an expose on me and what I meant to charter schools. So I'm going to talk to charter schools, whatever that was. I'll talk about that here in a minute, too. But this wellness room. Let's talk about the wellness room. LACO. Why weren't they involved with us? They didn't want anything to do with us. They're, everybody's going to the LACO meetings. You think these meetings are wild. You go to the LACO meeting, and they're like, what's up with Acton Agua Dulce sponsoring everybody? I got such a deep story on that. You'll see a name come up. I'll leave you a couple crumbs that you can catch on to, and then you'll see these names pop up, and they'll go, he's crazy, but he's psychic at the same time. Okay? I'm going to ask for a future agenda. Listen very carefully. It's Groundhog Day, again and again. All back to this charter garbage. Anyway, Wellness Center. LACO. What did wellness, what did, what did wellness mean? LACO comes in here and we got to give them money because we're not big enough like Orange County to develop your own health agency or Beverly Hills or whatever you are. So you have your own health agency, so you have your own health officer. So we pay them money under contract. What do you think they gave us in support for the money we gave them? 5150 responses. That's what a kid deserves. Gets bullied, gets nothing, gets no sped services, no conditions on suspensions, all these things, and finally they start raising hell. I'm going to be the hero at school by being a punk. And then finally, finally when you freak out enough, they put you in an ambulance and send you for 72 hours somewhere in a padded cell, and that's going to fix you while everybody up is, is calling me up, hey, get that kid off my campus. Yeah, I'm going to clean it up. I'm going to be the hero at the football game, people. Yeah, buddy. The wellness center, some of this is what you're saying could be real if you let it. But the superintendent come in here and nobody ever concerned about it. They don't want Lake in here. You're too busy shuffling charter money around to hide it. You don't want them eyes in here. But when he gets here, he used to work for LACO. He understands these programs. So what does he do? He has meetings. He invites you to hear what they're selling. Did anybody go to the meeting? Yeah, Chad went to the meeting. We heard all this stuff that made us uncomfortable. But we're there to listen and go, that's not for, I will say this flat out, sue the hell out of me tomorrow morning. I am not a, an outlet mall for Planned Parenthood. Is that what you wanted to hear? Yeah, there's no due process rights in this one. I need some water. I don't want to sound like a chihuahua. But the wellness center, you are supposed to participate. Tell me. I'm not going to be handing out things that is none of my business. You start handing that crap out to my daughter, and you'll see the bad part of me. That ain't pretty. It used to be worse, but now I, I'll get after you with my walker here. You're not going to do that with my kids. There's such a thing called parental rights. I believe in those. I'm just getting started. Y'all need to go sleep. This is the last meeting of the year. So the wellness center, communicate what you want. I don't need a lynch mob coming in here acting like I run Lego. If I did, half the stuff wouldn't be here. But you all got to be politically correct. I'm still trying to understand the educator mentality. And my mentality, you do what you're told, and we produce excellent services, and that's why I work where I work. There's no questions about that. Come to my work. See me at work. Not a lot of theory in handing out whatever it is you're going to hand out. I am not a parent of anybody else's kid but mine. So, so much for the wellness center. I want them to give us 
an opportunity. If you want to paint on a wall, then put a wall up and let people paint it down where I work. It's called art. The Banksy guy. I wish I would have painted somebody holding a bomb. I wouldn't be sitting here. Put up a wall. Put crayons in there, whatever you kids like. You can't breathe spray paint. I'm okay. Anyway, it's a wellness room. It's meant to be okay. We don't go into denial like my parents. Smash my KISS record. That didn't do nothing. But a wellness room is supposed to be a place. We're looking for a table hockey. What else was it? A ping pong table. Maybe somebody needs to go in there and take a break. So they don't skip class like I used to. You still don't want to play foosball with me. I flunked half my classes, but I'm great at foosball. A wellness room is a place for kids to go where they don't have par parents and adults breathing down their neck constantly. Let them go in there, let them unwind. It's okay to be okay. You find this bullying and garbage, go away. So, yeah, I'm afraid to say any more about the wellness room because I'll begin using the sixth letter of the alphabet profusely. I guess me getting wound up is why everybody's freaked out, right? Okay, I want to talk about SPED. I have, I have the luxury of having the least cognitive functional child in the district. Anybody want to contest that? This isn't a contest. My child is incapable of sin. Think about that. I know somebody else. I don't know him, but I'm going to be hiding from him when I die. But I'm going to say I'm with her. She's incapable of sin. So I've been through the war about sped. I've been with somebody wanted to keep her tied up in a chair. I've been through all that garbage. My file on my kid is this thick. There's some, there's some ideas that are floating around that aren't real. Number one, sped starts with this, take notes. There's something called child fine. That means somebody sees something that says something is not right. I want you to think about a parent being hit with, I think something's not right with your child. It's such a struggle, number one, not for it to be somebody's fault and be able to look past it and say, who isn't perfect, right? But you've got a teacher, think about this, you've got a teacher that's looking at something with all of their training and stuff, and they look at this kid and they go, something's not right. Imagine being the one that goes to the parent and goes, hey, you know what? I think something's not right. And the parent freaks out. No, what are you talking about? My kid? What are you doing? It's called child fine. Teachers are obligated to do it. Staff members are obligated to do it. It's federal law. I don't care whether you like it or not. But the bigger part of it is teachers that do this, they're taking a big, huge risk. Number two, if you, there is a problem, you need to report to the district I would like to have my child assess. I need to know what's going on. You write it down. You fill it out on paper. You give it to them. They got 30 days to have an IEP meeting or have an assessment done. You don't just say, oh, uh, Yolanda is not in charge of special education. The site principals are in charge of special education. That means you get on a computer and you go, whose IEP is next? And when you find that and you get there's a, there's a committee called CAC, that's a parent committee for the SELFA. When you go there, if they have a speaker, people come in, they want to unload, oh, the district's terrible, uh, and then you get a rush and 19 people want to have a, a, an IEP meeting. You can't possibly do that. So then the principal goes to the superintendent's office and says, hey, I got a rush IEP meetings, what am I going to do? That's the way it works. You don't come in here and point at me. Like, I'm in charge of special education, I'm dropping the ball. It happens at the site. Let's carry on so you know your basic rights. Once you get to the site, you look at the, the, the psychologist comes in and says, hey, this, 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 I think this kid has this, I think that we could help by doing this, I think we need speech psychology, I think we need this. Let, let's try this. Remember, you're going from a point of being completely uninformed to have somebody look at the kid for the first time. 
you set up goals, you do your thing, you measure, you report up for it, you have a meeting in a year and you look at what's working and what's not. Don't think somebody's going to come in here, snap their finger, and everything's going to be wonderful. It's a team process. Nobody that's involved in special education does it for the glory of it because half the time they got administrators that squelch what they want to do. Here's where it breaks down. Let's say I don't want these people. I don't want the, these people in my classroom. There's two people that need to be really objective in special education. That's the psychologist and that's the principal. Bottom line. Because they're the ones that kind of wave this out and say, hey, what's fair? We've got training for that. So if you're not getting special education services and you don't write this stuff down and ask for it in a civil way, that's on you. But if you do that and you don't, and you're not getting a response, then you call me. And you better do it quickly because I may not be here too long if the lynch mob gets to me before you do. Next, I want to talk about suspensions. California law governs suspensions. Bottom line, you can't just suspend something because you don't like them. Or I'm supposed to sit up here on the board and go, I never did like that kid. His parents never waved at me and this kid's a punk. So I'm going to pressure you up because I'm on the board. I'm going to pressure you up to throw this kid out. Well, if the kid's got some behavioral issues, some 504 and IEP issues that y'all don't know about and you shouldn't know about, those have to be weighed in. It's California law. And if you don't do that, you're violating rights. And if somebody like me goes out there and tells a principal, you get them out of here, I'm taking a lot of heat from the community. Guess what? You are pressuring them under the collar of your office. So you're pressuring them to do something that's illegal. And when I file a civil rights complaint against you, then you roll on me, the board member, that said they were pressuring me. That creates all kinds of liability. If you're new on the board, you may not understand that liability. That liability may include your house by the time it's over. But there are California laws about everything. It's very difficult for administrators to do their work when programs are funded at 25% of what they actually need. I'm, special Ed has never been funded at more than 25%. Now, unfortunately, I, I will say this, only I can say this because I have the privilege to say it legally. I've seen some people that take advantage of these systems and they're looking for this from day one and there's nothing an administrator can do about that. Your only defense in that is to have your paperwork and your programs in place. That's the bottom line on SPED. If you have any questions, call me, call me quick. I want to talk about what this year looks like for me as a board member. I'm not up here to be a principal. I'm not up here to be the athletic director or an aide. But the school district doesn't work without all the people. I don't think there's one kid in the school or one teacher that hasn't been my kid's teacher. So I know what you all are. I don't need somebody telling me what you are and what you're not and how happy you are. I know the blessings you put on. I'm looking at you all back there. The three of you. I don't know who you are, but you're lucky to be with them. You all have had a profound impact on my child's life. See, I'm yelling at you when I say it too, right? But you know, you all know what you do. But at the end of the day, I got a different set of things I look at. I don't look at if one kid's happy. I don't look, I look at why I ran. And the last one was restore our name, good name in the educational marketplace. Why would I want that? Do you buy a Yugo? Oh yeah, I was the only one, right? No. What do you want? You want to be the best, right? So how do you measure where you're going and what you've done? And what the superintendent does and what the team does? Kim and her TOSAs have been the most significant thing that have come to this district for a really long time because they have all these programs going on. If you want to know what they are, go to the district main web page and they're called signature programs. Those were not here two years ago. Here, I'll take credit for Antelope Valley College, right? Wrong. That didn't exist until it started, the talk started last July. There were people 
who know people over there, who sit on boards, who do what they do, he reached out to people. And, and it, I, it was happening so fast, I couldn't believe it. I work for government, I know what it is. It happened so fast that there were kids that actually got college credits at the end of the year, and they were only talking about it. So slap yourself on the back. Make it all about you, baby. But there are kids who graduated this year with college credits, and there's going to be more next year. That wasn't here. Go to the main district webpage and click on those things and find out they're real. The Carpenters Union is coming in here. I, I know Carpenters, they have boats that I wish I had, and they don't have $3 million worth of student debt pretending they're a lawyer. There are significant things happening here. At my level, that's what I see. That's what I measure. I measure our ability solely, our ability to tell people out here on that billboard. We still got Newhall School District sending us flyers because they're pissed off because they lost in court over charter schools. You should have got a better attorney. I'll just hire the one from Harvard. But they're still trying to come to our school. Why do I come to your school? It just says come to my school. Read the web page. Once them kids get here, they're, they don't want handguns over there. They don't want drug deals. They don't want, they don't have to wear a certain hat so they don't get shot. But if I can get them here, because they know they're going to get a job and they're going to be treated well, guess what? I open the door to people like, what was her name? Sally. Huh? Sally. Yeah. Sally. I can't say it. You know Sally. that because I'll be breaking the Brown Act, right? Sally. So I didn't have my mic on the whole time. I have to start You're over. <laughs> anyway, Tracy. All right. I got Tracy laugh. I'm killing it tonight. So, but I'll tell you what. If they look at the programs and they look at this and go, oh, I can do this, I can do this, and they find out that they're real, they come in the door. And guess what happens when I get them in the door? They get to see all these spunky kids been up here yelling at me. They will close the deal. My teacher will close the deal. And you three up there sitting at the front desk, you are the most important voices. Again, you're with them? No. <laughs> dude, dude, dude. I'm not FarmersOnly.com, but get with them, okay? So they're the face of the district. People walk in the door. I'm not hearing this, I'm unhappy, I'm just blah, 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 blah. I'm hearing, hi, how are you, how can I help you? God bless you three. But once they get here, these kids get here, then they get to see our community, they get to see, see the programs that are here, and our ADA goes up. So we don't have to pimp ourselves off to, uh, is that a good word, is that not a good word? I'm not talking to you, educator. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I'll put you up here so you can do the Yeah. That way we don't have to pimp ourselves off to some charter person. What else do I have? I didn't get enough birthday cards from y'all. I'm very upset. Not really. <laughs> and I'm very proud of the accomplishments that Kim and her team have made. I'm very proud of the way I walk into district offices now and I'm greeted like somebody even though I'm not. Y'all fake it that I'm okay, that's good. I appreciate that, thank you. But we got really, really good things going on here and we're going to be self-sufficient. You watch and see. People are gonna to wanna to come here. Y'all are here anyway, so. But you guys are the brand, don't forget that. Yell at me all you want, but you guys are the brand. Oh, just a minute. I missed, I missed a very important holiday. I missed, I didn't even know it, I was so busy. I missed National Sitting Duck Day. Get a picture of that. I'm sorry. Next. Um, for doing all that you do for our community, I know I, I said it last week, I sang your praises our last meeting, um, and this meeting, and probably next meeting, because you definitely <laughs> deserve it. Um, thank you for giving all that you give to our community. Um, Tracy, thank you for your PTSO update um, of all of the great events that you guys accomplished all year. You guys are up to great things. Um, I thank you for supporting 
our staff, um, supporting those who support our kids because they're what's important and we have to we have to support our staff. And thank you to everybody in here that was a part of that. Um, we really appreciate you. Um, Miss Sadie, I know you left, um, but I didn't know that there was a new season of Outer Banks, so I thank you for letting us know that. <laughs> <laughs> and um, you said our brains are powerful tools. I absolutely agree with you. Um, and I love, I love watching you use yours to influence and empower others. Um, I've watched you grow up, and that girl, mark my words, she's going to be the president someday. <laughs> she will. Um, Liz, last meeting I did not get to congratulate you on your son getting accepted into college and making it that far and I just want to say congratulations it's a huge accomplishment um, and kudos to you. Thank you so I know that you you attributed it to staff on campus which it does but it does start at home so congratulations mama thank you um, Tiffany your comment regarding 100% of our seniors graduating that deserves applause our seniors deserve applause that is incredible um, so thank you for bringing it up again um, and thank you to everybody on campus that helped them graduate and thank you to their parents. That is an incredible accomplishment. I'm incredibly proud of our best guests. I've told everybody at, out in you know, my world that we had 100 seniors graduate and when I'm at work and I say we, they know that I'm talking about Acton on Dulce, not the school that I work at. Um, Sally, who left, um, I want to thank you for standing up to all of our children. That's what we should all be here for. Um, and if we're not, every single person from the board members to staff to parents on any volunteer group, if we're here for something other than our children and standing up for our children, then we need to find a new area to spend our time or a new profession. Um, so Sally, I just want to thank you for standing up for our children. Um, Coach Sparks, I hope you're listening. First, I absolutely admire you and I respect you and um, I hate that you have to come here and be so passionate, but I really appreciate that you do um, and that you have the courage to come here and share your passion on behalf of the whole ADA and our students and the staff. Um, I think that you are absolutely right in some of the comments that you said, probably all the comments that you said, but some that I'm specifically talking about, um, where we've lost our trust. We've lost your trust. I know that we, as a school board and as a district, we need to work extra hard to earn the trust back of the teachers and of the staff and of the students and the parents. We need to work really hard to rebuild those relationships. Um, so I agree with you, and it's not going to be an easy road going up from here, but it is, that's the path that I'm hoping that we go, rebuilding all of those relationships that are so badly damaged. Um, speaking of rebuilding, I have requested a report um, from the district office of reasons why our district has such a high rate of turnover in our administration. Um, it's not just at Vasquez, and it's not just in the last five years, but that's what I would like to focus on. Um, that's what I've asked that we focus on. I would like to look at the ways that we have misstepped. I like I would like the district to look at the ways um, that we've missed red flags in the hiring process that we haven't gone about things the right way and I would also like to look at the things the great things that we have done the great hires that we have the great staff members that we have and learn from both of those um, in order to in order to move forward um, and create a plan on how to retain our staff members starting with our administration we're going to keep it simple and start with our simple-ish 
We're going to keep it small and start with our administration and how can we move forward in proper training and proper pr preparation um, in treating fairly and adequately and retain our administrators. And I do believe that that will trickle down to retaining our teachers and retaining our classified staff. And in that, we will retain our students, which will then build our ADA, which means we're bringing more programs. It does start at the top. So we do need to create that, um, that mindset of where do we go from here and what are some positive takeaways that we can get from where we're at and move forward with our best foot forward. Um, I hear a lot of the school board said, the school board wants, the school board hired, the school board did. Um, some respects that's true. As a school board, we voted the way that we voted at our last meeting. It's absolutely fair to say the school board because we are one fifth of an entire board and the way that we voted represents the entire board. It represents the people that did not vote the same way. We're all responsible. To say the school board in that sense is great. To say the school board wants to tear up the gym floor. The school board wants to rip down banners at Vasquez. The school board recommended that we hired this person or fired that person. The school board did not do those things. In the year that I've been on the school board, we've never spoken about tearing down banners at Vasquez, and those banners are, are new. So I, I'm sure I would have been on the, are we tearing down banners at Vasquez? I haven't heard that. If we're going to discuss it, then we need to discuss it as a board. Then it would be the school board, but right now it's not. Um, Thank you for that. The school board has not discussed a sex ed or Planned Parenthood wellness room being held on the site. We haven't heard discussion about it. We haven't gotten a report of it. We do have wellness centers that are were facilitated by counselors, by staff. Those are very different from wellness centers that are handing out Planned Parenthood. And I say Planned Parenthood, rumored Planned Parenthood, because I have not heard from any eligible source that we're handing out Planned Parenthood or anything of that sort as a school board. We do have our wellness centers where kids can go chill, where kids can get extra support, mental health, that kind of thing. Are we handing out information on STDs and birth control in our wellness centers? That has not been discussed as a school board. I would like for it to be discussed as a school board so that we know what's going on, but we have not had a report on that yet. So the school board is not trying to hand out birth control to your students. Um, last thing, senior walk. I wasn't able to talk about it at our last meeting, and I should have. Um, I was able to head to Meadowlark in the morning before our seniors got there. I took my kids because they were out of school already. Um, and then we, we stood in the hallway where the kindergartners lined the hallway and those seniors walked through and they grabbed the hand of a kindergartner. And it was so, there's kind like the way that those kindergartners looked at those seniors in their funny hats and their bright gowns and the way that they marched through Metal Arc with them, one kid on top of another, on top of a senior on his shoulders. Um, it was so incredible watch, to watch, and those are memories that those little kids will never forget. Our seniors will never forget. Those kids that got to stand around and high five, they will never forget, and that does not happen in big districts. It does not happen when you have 800 seniors graduating. It doesn't happen in big districts. That's, that's a small district that our little gem of a school gets to enjoy. Um, and then I went up to High Desert. I raced the buses up to High Desert where I got to watch the seniors also at High Desert. I got to watch my son who was a student there. Um, 
high-fiving all of the seniors as they walked by. He was one of the kids holding the banners that uh, Mr. Rowland's class had made. All the sixth graders got to hold banners for the seniors to walk through that all had their names on them. Um, and I was standing right at the front of that, and I listened to, after they walked through the seventh and eighth graders, high-fiving, and the kids are all screaming and cheering, and then they're walking through these banners with their names on them, and I could hear them, oh, that's so cool, where's my name? It was just such an incredible event to witness and be a part of. Um, so I just want to thank every single person that had anything to do with facilitating the senior walk and making sure that that happened. Um, I know that it was all three schools planning that, and it wasn't just a couple people planning that. It was definitely collaboration between all of our employees. So huge thank you to all of the people that made that happen. That was an incredibly special event for every single student on our campus. So thank you very much. That's all I have. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm going to start off the conversation a little bit different. Um, I don't know if any of you know uh, Ms. Rhonda Webster or not. Are you guys familiar with her in the community? I had a really great privilege to know Rhonda for a long time. And um, your Boy Scout, watching your sons grow up and uh, coming and helping in our community. Rhonda's the most beautiful, caring, um, heartfelt person that you'd ever want to meet. I came home last night at 9 o'clock after I got off work to my wife crying and to the news that she had taken her life. So if you could humor me for 30 seconds and let's have a moment of silence for Rhonda, I'd appreciate it. She was so big in this community. So please uh, give 30 seconds to her. Thank you so much for that. That will move me into my next point of uh, the Wellness Center. I was on the Zoom meeting with, with uh, Laco, Dr. Sahakian, and I listened to what was being talked about at the Wellness Center. For me, the Wellness Center is a place where a kid that may be struggling at home may be having abuse issues at home that might not have somewhere to vent or have an outlet with another adult to say that they're troubled or it could be a myriad of things. Maybe maybe uh, little Susie had a relationship with a boy and that didn't go right and now she finds herself lost and in, in, in trouble but is afraid to talk, doesn't know how to approach mom and dad. So maybe that wellness center helps little Susie n navigate this. We talked about suicide. You know, if I never heard of another person committing suicide in their life ever again, I would be the happiest person in this world. My best friend did it with me on the telephone. Uh, I, I know numerous kids that have done it. Last night, Miss Webster. It didn't happen last night, but I learned about last night. We live in an environment that it's not like it was in, in, in my childhood growing up. It's, it, this stuff is so public and so ingrained in the social media and the TV that we watch and the movies that we watch that it's almost like it's second nature, or it's not second nature, but it's, it's just common theme. Oh, so-and-so off himself, so-and-so off himself. So if a wellness center allows a child to come in and say, I'm not okay, I need help. Ms. Counselor, can you help me? Mr. Counselor, can you help me? I don't know what to do. If it opens a door for a child to talk, or it could be a teacher for that matter. Maybe the teacher needs social help. If it opens that door for somebody to come in, I don't see the harm in it. In the meeting, I specifically asked, because I don't want a fishbowl full of condoms sitting at the front door when you walk in for a kid to come in and grab a handful and say, yes, it's okay to have sex because you should wait. You should, you should wait for that special moment. 
Likewise, I don't want to see boxes of uh, birth control for, for women. I was assured that's not what it's about. The Wellness Center is about emotional distress, as I understand it. Would it be great to have a meeting on it, to elaborate more on it? Absolutely, I believe we should have that. But please, understand, um, nobody up here is preaching plan Planned Parenthood, nobody up here is preaching premarital sex, nobody up here is, you know, saying be wild and free. It's not what happens. I'm going to move on from that. Ms. Pam Walter, I appreciate you coming out here on these late nights, um, giving us the information to allow our community to be informed and stay on top of topics. I appreciate everything you've done for this community. Um, I moved here in 1994, continue to live here, raise both of my kids here, my wife is here, I think she moved here in 89. So we are heavily invested in our town, and I appreciate everything that you've done to get us to this point. I hope that we have people to carry on the torch for you and make you proud. I don't like to see you up here upset, crying, because I know where you're, you're coming from a place deep in your heart, and I appreciate you. Tracy Costin, thank you for being here. You're spot on about the uh, Mike Murphy stuff. Um, your, your comments about the DO, you're spot on as well. It, it, you guys don't remember, you should rewind the tape and watch it, because it's the truth. Um, Mama Mendoza, uh, you should be so proud of the daughter that you've raised. I know you're not here, but I'm going to speak to you anyways. Uh, I didn't have the honor of, of knowing, um, well, I didn't realize that I had known the Mendozas through my wife when it was in regards to homeschooling many years ago. And Kelly educated me when I got home one night, told me all about it. But Sadie popped on my radar at um, Night of the Stars. Just so bright, shining, energy. I mean, the lightning storm that we had the other night does not compare to the energy that that girl has, I'm telling you. <laughs> it's off the charts. So, um, Mr. Mr. Mendoza, be proud of her. She's, she's a shining star in our community. and. Um, so proud of, I'm so proud to watch these kids stand up and, and, be, and speak what they feel. It, it takes so much courage to do that. And I hear you, Sadie. I hear everything you're saying. I, I agree with a lot of it. We need to be better. Period. End of story. Liz, um, thank you for sharing your feelings. Um, I know it's not easy for you. I appreciate being involved in the community. As Brianna said, congratulations on your kid making it into college. That's such a huge accomplishment. As a father that did not attend college, has been in a family that nobody ever went to college, and my son, who is 19, is going into his second year of college, I understand how proud you are. It, it's, it's an amazing accomplishment, even though it's not my accomplishment. Just being part of it is, is something magical. So congratulations to you. Thank you. Tiffany. Thank you for speaking up. You know, I love hearing when people that have been here forever come speak their mind. When, when you recognize that we live, this is our community. This is where we grew up. It's unlike any other community. I've tried to say this over and over and over again to people. It seems to fall on deaf ears. If you want to be successful in this town, you will make personal connections to the people in this town. You may not agree with everything that's being said in this town or the way people are, but you will still make those connections. If you choose not to make those connections, you're going to have what you had last week. You will have no trust. You will have no word, no say, because nobody's going to listen to you. And that just creates a whole other uh, avenue of Nothing. We sit here and tread water. We keep doing the same thing year after year after year after year after year, and we never advance. And I don't understand it. It does not have to be so difficult. Okay? You lead by example. End of story. You 
get out there in the trenches and you do work. Treat people as you want to be treated. It's pretty simple. In my, my little key brain anyways. Thank you for speaking up, Tiffany. Sally, she said that. Um, I appreciate your, your words. It takes a lot of courage to stand up there and, and just say 10 words, but I hear you and I appreciate you. Coach Sparks, you knocked that one out of the park tonight. Um, you know, when, when I sit here, I saw you sitting here two weeks ago, and I see teachers. Teachers after teacher after teacher. I read letters after letter after letter from teachers. People that are 15, 20 years in this district that historically never say anything. They don't say a word. They sit back there like little church mouse, bite their tongue. Yet we had so many adults come in here defending Mike Murphy. To me, if Mike Murphy did something so egregious, he would have been dismissed immediately. But he wasn't. So, it is what it is at this point. The words, as Coach Park said, are hollow coming from this district office. Hollow. They carry no weight. Staff's not listening. Teachers aren't li listening. Kids aren't listening. And parents are done with lip service. I'm one of those parents. I'm done with lip service. I'm not sitting up here after working 13 hours today in my free time trying to make something better only for it to get, we're good, guys. We're good. We're not good. Not good. We need to change. We need to be better. We need to do things better. End of story. It's not rocket science. I am not a college educated professional. Professional. I don't speak perfectly. I'm not a doctor. But I'll be darned if I could probably not run this office better than it's being done. And I'm going to be frank with you. It is a disaster from that office to that office to this office. Nobody knows what one person's doing to the next person. It's constant. She said that, he said that, she said this. Who's doing what? Who's on first and who's on third? Pretty simple people, let's figure it out. It's business management. This office is all about business management. It has nothing to do with Anything else other than we're here to manage a business. Put the people in the right spots, work through it, let's stop cutting each other's throats, and work together as a team. This one of the best front office staff in Southern California sitting right back there right now. You walk in the door, I can have the worst day. How can I not smile looking at, looking at them? I mean, seriously, they bleed their school colors. Talking to everybody. That's my mom. <laughs> it's just, it's frustrating. It's so frustrating to hear the stuff that keeps coming back. And it's, it seems, you know, in my world, in the corporate world, this it would never fly here. It'd be gone down the road. And I'm pretty sure Ken would probably do the same thing. We can do better. I have no doubt about it. We have to make connections. We have to do what we're going to say. We have to show up. And we can't be afraid to roll our sleeves up and get dirty. It's just the way it is. I'll get off that soapbox now. I had the opportunity to attend the High Desert graduation. Ms. Van Orman, you put on that spectacular event. I was able to get away for a little bit on, uh, on that morning, to come enjoy it, stand there, watch the kids. We're so proud to be moving on to our high school. It's just, it was just spectacular. Then, a couple days later, I got to enjoy Vasquez. I can tell you, being in a role of uh, serving others, there's nothing more gratifying, at least to me, than to sit up there and watch so many young, impressionable minds moving on to the next step. To sit there and look at parents that I've seen for years as their kids have grown up, so excited that the kid has graduated high school. 
it truly is a blessing for me to get to witness that. I'm here for one reason, and it's to make my community better and stronger. It's to make the kids healthier. It's to make the parents feel like they're heard. And I know, again, we can do better. Those graduations are testimony to that. It was an amazing night. Um, I think I'm pretty well done. I just, uh, like I said, I want to be frank about it, but this district office has got to make some changes. We have got to make better changes. And I, I intend to ask for future board references so we're all aware. I would like to know what the hours of operation are for this office. What time people come in, what time people leave. What's the percentage of homework versus in-office work. So that will be my last request. Hopefully somebody up here will second that. Maybe we can get some kind of report back by the next school year. I appreciate all of you for sitting out here and listening to me rant and listening to uh, Ken's stand-up tonight. It was pretty good. I will say there's a lot of wisdom in him. And uh, I think we can all do better. That's the point of my message is we can do better. We deserve better. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Walker. Well, there's been a lot of comments made that I share with my colleagues on the board. Uh, I've taken notes, but I'm going to go down my list now. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to congratulate all our students for their advancement in their grade levels, promotions from high desert and graduation in high school, and recognizing the significance that is virtually unheard of that we had 100% graduation of our senior class. I've called around to my colleagues around the district and the Hart district, and none of them had the success that was attributed to Vasquez High School. And I was proud to tell them, I said, well, we did. And not me, but the people at the school and the hard work of the students. Additional comments I have. My colleagues on the board have said a lot of things that are really important, and I agree with them. Sometimes we have differences of opinions, but that's what we are. We're a consensus board. The challenges that our students faced and our families and staff relating to coming out of COVID for two years, in person, home person, going back, online, back and forth, everything else, it was exceptional. It was extraordinary. Our staff worked hard, our parents were patient and frustrated at times, but the one that gets the most credit was the hard work of the students. During that time, we had some self-learners, self-taught students scoring five on a test, on an AP test. In my entire history at Vasquez and in this district, I don't think we've ever had a student get a five on an AP test, and that was because they were studying and determined to make it go, even though they did. So I know our students are working hard, and the support they had at the school was exceptional. I'm frequently frustrated because I spent 18 years at the high school teaching, coaching, and four years of dean of students. And so I recognize my colleagues and the hard work that they've had to come up with. And oftentimes in the conversations that I would have on the board here, I says, well, what, well wait, why can't we spend that? Don't we have enough money to get the computers to upgrade programs? And there was a lot of good ideas coming forth, and I said, yeah, let's do it. That sounds good to me. People were coming up with ideas and suggestions of how we get past the extraordinary challenges of the past two years. This wellness center, I agree with Mr. Wadsworth. To me, the wellness center, as I understand it and I would accept it, is a support service for our students coming out of COVID, transitioning back, re-socializing with their peers on campus, learning how to communicate, how to disagree, how to get through things, and how to understand things. Because we know, and most educators know, that the best way to educate our children is not on a computer screen, it's in a classroom, where they can hear diverse questions and questions and back and forth and debates with their peers and teachers providing clarification and looking at the content that they're discussing. So that transition coming from computer back to the class was a, almost like a foreign experience for the teachers, for the staff and oh wow for the students exceptional 
So my understanding is the wellness center that was presented out at the school was a place for them to go if they had frustrations. And I thought to myself as a teacher, how could I use that for the better of my students in my class? I'd say, you have a tough day? Well, here, here's your pass. Why don't you go over to the wellness center? They'd ask me, can I go to the wellness center? Yes, I would never tell them no. Go over there, have some time to spend with your peers, have some time to spend with a counselor, then come back to class, because your value time is in the class where I can help you get better with the content. Moving on to comments. It has been said multiple times that I and the board don't listen to people. And that is fundamentally, absolutely incorrect. I sit here every night, I look at the responders, whoever's having to speak to us and addressing things, and I take notes, and I contemplate, and I think, and I interact. I am always listening to the people in the community, the people who want to come here and talk. Now, my greatest pride and frustration at the same time was last week when we had students come here with passion, with sincerity, with emotion, talk about their assessment about what had, what, what had transpired. I listened to every last one. I had to get up and walk away for five minutes to collect my thoughts. The students were my first and only charge was with the students. I'm sorry, adults came second. It's always been that way. From the first time that I went to work at the high school until I got here. So my response is, I don't say much back. I don't respond back to them because I am legally not allowed to call back. I'm not, the problems that the issues that were being expressed, I can't comment on, though I would love to. I would certainly love to sit down and have a round table concern. I'd like to do a TED talk and talk about it, but I can't do that. When it comes to personnel matters, I am here to obli I'm obligated to look out for the rights of our employees and their privileges. I cannot talk about their circumstance. I can't comment on it, good, bad, or indifferent. I get the information from our superintendent. We as a board discuss it, and we take it and then we make decisions. I cannot talk about it. I can't tell why I, I can't tell you why I voted the way I do because I am prohibited from doing so as long as I'm on the board. When Tiffany gets up and spoke, I apologize, I didn't recognize your name out of all the thousands of students that I had the privilege of working with, but I recognize your face. And now do I, do I recollect that when you were there and when I was Dean of Students, I saw you, you were, I'm sure you were active because that was a fun place to be at Vasquez. The students were working hard, there was a lot of activity, there was a lot of pride. I heard a reference at the last meeting that, oh, well, we talked to that as trainer trash high. Nothing ever upset me more was, people referring to that high school and the hard work in modulars with little to nothing, no, no shade cover, no lunch room, a gym with no heater and no air conditioning, and then we couldn't use it. Play production built on a stage in the quad because we didn't have, and those kids made it work and the teachers made it work, and it was not trailer trash high. It was Vasquez High School. And the pride that those students brought to that campus is one that I cherished the whole time that I was there in my 18 years. And during that time, I was able to teach, coach three sports. I was ASB advisor, athletic director, and then had an opportunity to go to dean of students. And then I found after Fort Elba, oh, this being administrator is tough. I want to go back into the classroom where the, where the joy and the privilege is, is working with students. So in 2010, I returned to the classroom and finished out my time there in the classroom coaching and teaching where I was working with students. So that I don't listen is not true. I hear every single word addressed to me personally, addressed to the board as a, general, as a rule, and all the other employees, the teachers, the staff, everybody there. 
The frustration is, and I've said it here before, the frustration comes is that while I'm sitting here and I hear things, I can't talk about it like I can in a classroom where I was talking with a student about a discipline matter in the odd dean's office, or I was giving instruction in my classroom and I was talking to parents at back to school night. As a board member, I don't get to do that anymore. And it's frustrating as heck that I cannot respond and provide some clarification for the actions that I took. I can only speak for myself. The reason I voted the way I did, I can't clarify that for you. I'm sorry. But I will always object and push back when people say and imply that I don't have the best interest of the students of Vasquez High School and Acton Anglo Dulce Unified School District. That is my only reason that I am here. I am not here for the adults. Sorry, adults. The parents give me ideas, but I look out for all of the students, not just students on my street, the ones I know that live down the street from me, the ones I see in the in the market, the ones that are on my football, basketball, or volleyball teams. I'm looking out for all of the students. I'm trying to make the best decision I can with the information provided long term that will look out for the students. Am I we asked to make some extraordinarily challenging, difficult questions? Absolutely, without a doubt. Many of them are not fun. I would love not to have to vote on several occasions. But that's not my responsibility. My responsibility is to collect the data, collect it, take the information, discuss with my colleagues on the board, and make a decision based on what is in the best interest in my mind, because I speak for myself, in the best interest of the students. There's a couple of things that I know that I know, and there's things that I don't know. And I've told my students that lots of times. I said, hey, I know what I know, and I know what I don't know. And when I don't know something, I ask questions. Throughout this entire challenging process, the white elephant in the room, all the things we're talking about that took place at the last board meeting, I asked thousands of questions. I wanted clarity. I wanted confirmation. I wanted information. Some of it I knew. Having been in a role as a dean of students, I knew things were supposed to be done, and so I wanted clarification. I got information, and that information received for me provided me the opportunity and the frustration to vote the way that I did. Was it easy? Absolutely not. Did I sleep for two days? No. Was I upset? Yes. But it was a decision that had to be made that I voted, and I went ahead and voted with what I knew. <clears throat> There's a couple of clarifications that were brought up about constantly bringing up about banners in the gym and tearing up the gym floor. Miss, Mrs. Taxoni is correct. This board, this current configuration board, has never considered that. But it was considered prior to her appointment. As far back as 2016, when the images that are currently in the gym and that were ordered for the banners belong to somebody else. And we don't have permission to use that image. And we were told in 2016, no, you cannot use that image. And people who play at the time I was athletic director, and I said, you can't do that. No, no, we're going to do it. They don't care about us. And I kept hearing, people don't care about Vasquez. No, nah, they don't care about Vasquez. And that chafed me to the gore. Because I care about Vasquez, and I care about Acton Aguadulce, and I care about protecting ourselves from high risk. We went ahead and did it, okay, so it was done. But it, the problem hasn't gone away. So no, we haven't discussed about tearing it up and tearing it down. But it's still the white elephant in the room when the floor is in its normal maintenance that we can eliminate that risk to the district.
Congress to Mr. Sparks and his difficult, difficult, difficult task as out of president. I served as out of president at Vasquez for three and a half years. Fortunately, I did not have the challenges that he had to do with the, with our bargaining unit members and COVID and distance learning and all that stuff, but we still had challenges. I know the difficult task that he has and the frustration that he feels that he comes to represent 48 some odd certificated personnel that work for us and teach our kids and work in the classroom and coach our teams and so forth. It's frustrating as all get out and I encourage him all the time to continue to speak to us because we listen. There's a couple of things that I won't do that I will not do. And as I get focused to myself and I look out for the students and the you know, the mind that I'm in charge with, I am not going to participate in any scheme, process, or significant event that puts this district at risk. If it doesn't support the students first, the district risk second, I'm going to have a hard time with it. So that's my bottom line when it comes to how I look at things. I'm looking at things from student safety, wanting improvements on the campus. It's always been a big issue for me. Looking out for our kids when they come to campus so that our parents know they can come to campus and the kids will be safe and they'll have an opportunity to excel in their educational endeavors, whatever that is. Career connections of things that Mr. Falsgraf said that we're bringing in that Dr. Sahakian has ushered in with encouragement from other people, from community members, from board members, saying, hey, this is a good idea. We got to Maybe our kids can do this. I recall way back in 2004 or 5, we had a college class taught at the campus and I volunteered my classroom. And I sat there and watched this college professor teach the kids and I watched how they reacted to that college professor different than a high school teacher. Well, the gig was up when I, the next day we came into my class, I said, okay, the gig's up now. I know how you can respond when the challenge is presented to you, presented to you as college. So that we have ABC coming back to our campus is awesome. Our kids can like, once again earn college credit when they graduate. And I think that's absolutely exceptional. One of my biggest things is looking out for the kids that aren't going to go to college. Forty percent of our kids are not going to go to college. And that's okay. They're going to go to the workforce, they're going to take a gap year, they're going to go to a technical trade school, they're going to go to a computer trade school, and that's okay. I'm going to shot on that for the Edwin post it. It was, it was flown as Vasquez High School, and then it was switched to school secretary at the district office. And then it was po posted on the personnel action report as Vasquez High School, and then switched to the district office. So this position is going to stay at the district office? Or is it only at the district office while summer school is happening and then there will be other changes? The latter, what you just explained. So just based on the district needs and summer school at Vasquez and without a office secretary, or perhaps even the opening of school, the district office based on need will be having a position at Vasquez for the summer assignment and if need be for this opening of the school year for Vasquez so that they're not without an office secretary. And then will you have to refly it? Or since it's been changed, will you have to refly it and re-interview and all that for the Vasquez? Once the official word comes in for the position, I'm going to defer to Ms. Shaw on the reposting, if that's a possibility, if, if it's needed. No, I don't believe it will need to be reposted. I have terrible glasses. What does that say? Who is that? What's that say? What's that name I write up there on the top? I think it says Barbie. No, I know if it was Barbie, I'm can't. What does it say? 
Where's the camera? Come on. Does that say Shiloh? Does that have Shiloh right there? That's you. Look at you. You're famous. You are Barbie. Oh, that was that was pretty good. <laughs> um, I just hope that at some point that says VHS. Yes. Because um, I think that's a valuable asset that is getting bounced around for whatever reason. So that's all I got to say. Okay, I have a couple of questions for clarity here. The Currently, the position of Secretary Vasquez is filled, correct? On medical leave. Yes. That but, person, so the position is not vacant at this time. That person is on medical leave with the no, intention. No, 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 no. Yes. When I, when I tell you not to talk, it's probably a very dangerous man. Just yeah. that it's an open, it's not, an, there's not a vacancy at the high school right now. And so, do we have the the position of school secretary at the DO using them as a substitute secretary to use wherever you want to? Is the reason one that was moved from Vasquez to the DO so that you can put this part, the individual, the secretary? That's correct. Yeah. If we had a vacancy at Metal Arc, the person could go to Metal Arc and work, correct? Yes, that's, that's, that's what I'm understanding. So, it's based, it's based on the on We already got her at Metal Arc. Why, why do we need to worry about any of that? Just, just to clarify once again, the, the, the position assignment on this par was changed to DO because there is a current position of school secretary active at Vasquez for summer school, just in, in, in general, 12 months. Should I lay that out position, my medical history for y'all while we're at it? The, there, there is an active position 12 months at Vasquez School Secretary that is currently filled, but there's like we need a substitute there to fill in while that person is out on medical. Right. right, because we have a summer program at Vasquez High School. Um, we, we have school to open right. in the fall at Vasquez right. High School. Right. So just based on need, the, the district office, if the assignment is district office, based on need, we could go ahead and direct the set employee to where, where the need is, and the need right now is at Vasquez. To fill in for the existing... Yes, so High, High Desert is, is open. May I, Mr. President, Mr. President Jorgensen? I believe that when there's an opening, a employee can um, apply for the position. When there, what, say that again? When huh? there is an opening, an employee can apply for any position they choose if they're qualified. Right, but there's not currently not an open position. So. It's not open. It's filled. It's just that the employee's out on medical leave. So it's kind of like a teacher doesn't come to class. We don't hire another teacher. We hire a, 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 a temporary employee to fill long-term employment until that teacher comes back. And it, here's my concern, is the employee that currently has the position under our agreements has rights for the position that when, now, if they choose not to return, then okay, fine. But we, we're calling it a secretary when it's not a secretary. It's like a, it's a fill-in secretary until we get resolution with the employee that currently has the position, correct? Correct. So going back to your first question, does the does the employee who actually holds the position at Vasquez have the right to the position itself? Well, they, they, they have, yes, they're right, they're there. They're, it's not that they have a right, they are hired in that position. It's a 12-month assignment, they just happen to be on medical leave. Correct. So they can't do the summer school assignment, and Correct. they can't do that stuff. So based on me, but we're asking, we're creating ourselves a, a little bit of a debacle that if we're saying, well, we're hiring a secretary before the other person, while well, the other person is out, and so when this person comes back, play devil's advocate, the employee returns, and then where does this employee go when she returns? There's no place for them to go. 
well, there's there's a, there's always there, there's always seniority in terms of bumping rights. So the wait a minute, hold on, bumping from a person who currently has a, has an assignment. No, no, what I mean, what I mean is, for instance, a hypothetical person returns back to their active position at Vasquez. The person that's filling in for Vasquez, school secretary, if they they have the right out on medical leave, so that individual cannot perform the responsibilities of summer school. If they come back, if they don't, if they can't, if they're still out on medical leave, when it comes time to start up for school, this person can, this temporary assignment can continue. And if this, if the person that has the position resigns, then we have somebody that can apply for it at that time. I understand that. Correct. But this says that we're hiring a, tech, a secretary for a position that doesn't exist. Now, if it said temporary assignment or a summer school assignment mm -hmm. to keep it in Kentucky context mm -hmm. so that we don't know, and I'm not going to speculate what we're, the employees have rights. I mean, they have a right to their position. We don't know what's going to happen with that. We can't operate with that. We're thinking what they're going to do and try to get them to do what we want to do. We're, we've been to that. We've been down that road. So, Mr. Jorgensen, are you are you suggesting the position on the part? Well, I know this individual here, and she's exceptional. I don't want to have anything go where we don't know what's going to happen two months down the road. If we know that the position is a temporary assignment to fill in, you're lacking a forum for discussion. I think you should table that. Well, I don't want to table the entire warrant register. I think you need to table the. You're saying you want to table the. You don't have a forum. You can't discuss what you're discussing right now about the forum. Okay, you can't discuss it. Come back. No, you only got two people out there. We're done discussing if you guys want to come back so we can not stay till 1 a.m. That's a record show that I would return to die at September 1. <laughs> On the personnel action report. Yes. As is. Mm -hmm. As is. Abstain. I thought we were tabled. Is this the table? That was the question. You got three votes. I need one more. Right. We're Can I change my vote? I thought we were tabling it. I would like to change my vote. assignment for the secretary position at Vasquez and said Dio. That Mo died on the vine. Motion dies for lack of a second. Call the question on the warrant register. The warrant or the personnel action? Personnel Mr. action. Mr. action. Far, oh. sorry. Kelly Jensen, aye. Falls, you have aye. Brianna Texoni, abstain. Chad Watson, abstain. Tim Jorgensen abstain. Motion does not move. Bring back more. Mm -hmm. Item 10B, Act and Aguadulce, California School Employees Association Chapter 473 proposal for 2022-2023 negotiations for collecting and bargaining information only, Dr. Sahaki. 
CSA, CSEA is presenting their initial reopener uh, proposal, which includes association rights, um, duty hours, salary benefits, evaluation process, layoffs to correspond with layoffs to correspond with the new legislation of the March 15th timeline that, that corresponds with certificate staff. Thank you. Board member discussion? Item 10C, declaration of public hearing of CSEA's initial contract proposals for negotiations according to government code section 3547. Open this hearing at 10.04, Dr. Zahaki. Thank you. This is a formal opportunity for public comment on CSEA's chapter number 473. Board member discussion. Hearing none, close the uh, hearing at 10.05. 10D, acceptance of CSEA's initial contract proposals for negotiations according to Government Code 3547. Motion to consider. Kelly Jensen makes a motion. Kelly. Balls, you are second. 10. Dr. Zahaki. It's, it's just our recommendation for the board to accept CSA's chapter number 473, the initial contract proposals for negotiations. Thank you. Board member discussion. Hearing none, call the question. Kelly Jensen, aye. Falls, you have aye. Brianna Texoni, aye. Chad Walter, aye. Tim Jorgensen, aye. Motion carries 5 0. 10 E. Acton Agrodosa Unified School District proposal. 2022-2023 negotiations for collective bargaining personnel. This is this just discussion. No, oh, this is like, yeah, Dr. Saki. Sure. AADUSD is presenting their our initial reopeners for 22-23 negotiations. Thank you, Mr. Burns. Board member discussion. Hearing none. Moving on, that's just an item. Uh, 10F, Declaration of Public Hearing of Acton Agrodosa Unified School District Initial Contract Proposals for Negotiations According to Government Code Section 3547. Open this hearing at 10.07. Dr. Zahaka. Again, it's just a formal opportunity for public comment on AUSD's initial contract proposals. Thanks. Board member discussion. Hearing none, we'll close this closed hearing at 10.08. 10G, acceptance of Act and Agrodosa would also unified school district initial contract proposals for negotiations according to government code 3547. Motion to consider. So moved, Kelly Jensen. Kelly Jensen. Second. Chair Ken. Dr. Sarkin. Employees agreed to take these positions. Yes. Thank you. Uh, can you define for me uh, technology term and uh, literacy? <laughs> what is that? It's the course called Technolit that um, I believe it's like a computer, computer literacy. Computer applications and all that kind of program software, writing. Okay, cool. Uh, let's see. Any more board member discussion? Hearing none, call the question. Kelly Jensen, aye. Balls drop, aye. Brianna Texoni, aye. Chad Walter, aye. Tim Jorgensen, aye. Motion carries 5 0. Item 10 I, resolution 2021 22.18, authorization to teach out. Wait a minute. That's the one we just did? No. It's a different number. Just a different echo. Oh, it's a different number. Okay. Uh, motion to consider. A motion. Brianna. Okay. Chad seconds. Dr. Zahakin. Ms. Shah, is it, would you like to elaborate? This one they have to have, uh, they have 18 semester units or nine uh, semester hours of upper division uh, graduate coursework in the subject area that they're teaching outside of their credential area in order to teach that. Board member discussion. Once again, were the, employee, the employees notified and they agreed to teach these courses next year? Yes. Thank you. 
I will say this, um, when the superintendent and assistant superintendents put things on the agenda, it's my expectation that they're put on there with some level of competency in their recommendation. They're your best recommendation. And I'm not in the business of micromanaging employees. Any further board member comments? Hearing none, call the question. Kelly Jensen, aye. Paul Schraff, aye. Brianna Texoni, aye. Chad Walter, aye. Tim Jorgensen, aye. Motion carries 5 0. Item 10J, Declaration of Need for Fully Qualified Educators. Motion to consider. Kelly Jensen, so moved. Okay. Paul Schraff, second. Ken. Dr. Zach. Thank you. Declaration certifies that the district does their due diligence in terms of employment search to recruit a fully prepared teacher for an appropriate assignment. Board member discussion? Hearing none, call the question. Kelly Jensen, aye. Paul Schraff, aye. Brianna Texoni, aye. Chad Walter, aye. Tim Jorgensen, aye. Motion carries 5-0. Education Services 11A, early pre-K presentation, Dr. Sahaki. Thank you. It's, it, it's a short presentation for the early uh, Universal Pre-K uh, program. With that, Ms. Shaw and her team uh, was working on this presentation for the board, and this goes to LACO as well. So, Ms. Shaw. Good evening, President Jorgensen and fellow board members. I have my team hopefully still on Zoom. Uh, Ms. Chen and Ms. Moynihan work diligently on our Universal Pre-K. So just a quick short presentation. So then you have to have a Miss Chen as a co-host co on there so you can she can share her screen. Last time she stayed up for midnight for uh, song, so I'm sure she's on here for me. <laughs> yes, Nicole Chung. No, she didn't turn it Well, we're paused and waiting. Yolanda, I do want to thank you for stepping out of your comfort zone and handling this. I know it's not your not your normal duty, so thank you for stepping up. Nicole, are you there? I'm here. Oh, we can hear. We won't see you. Maybe we can hear. <laughs> um. Okay. We're not sure if Nicole might hands on there, but Nicole, do you have screen share? I do. It's just it, the options are limited, so I will do my best. <laughs> okay. Oh, it's clicking on. Let's see what we got. All right. So, Bill, but 2021 uh, really universalized this uh, access to TK and the goals being that we're going to open TK to all four-year-olds uh, over the course of the next four years and by 2025-26 uh, school year we would be available to all students that are four turning five in that school year. Um, so that's just as part of the rollout currently TK is available to students who are turning five between September 2nd and December 2nd. And so for each successive year, we will add two months. And then finally by September 1st for that 25-26 school year. Uh, AAD USD is focused on supporting a coherent early educational system that begins in for most students in providing access to transitional kindergarten for all four-year-olds by the 2025-26 school year, as well as a, a combination of creating a comprehensive day. Sorry, I'm 
is missing. So then including conference today with uh, adding in the options of extended learning and care opportunities through our extended learning opportunities partnerships. So we will continue to offer a full day TK and then extend those learning opportunities to meet that nine hour requirement for universal, universal pre-kindergarten. So in planning for universal TK, uh, AAD USD uh, administrative structures will support school leadership in building those connections between families and expanded learning opportunities. Um, and we know that to successfully implement UTK, we can create a continuum of service from TK through third. We're going to aim to cultivate and further collaborate with internal and external partners, uh, work with our extended learning opportunities programs and with our families to uh, create inroads for expanding that program. Uh, with the established, already established TK, as well as our established uh, early education, early special education program at Meadowlark, we have access to families who are looking for support for their students, so this would also provide another op uh, option. And once again, we'll partner through uh, our extended learning opportunity program to expand that uh, six and a half hour TK day to a full nine hour day, plus 30 extra school days per year. Currently, the requirements for teaching TK is a valid multiple subject teaching credential. But by August 2023, the requirements will include uh, the multiple subject teaching credential as well as 24 early childhood education units uh, or the equivalent as determined by school districts. So in order to support that and also in just in general support a quality early education program, uh, teachers have access to a robust professional learning opportunities. Uh, including things on, you know, new and established curriculum, early literacy training, as well as our new induction support for our new teachers. In addition, we are going to be looking to train our staff in observational assessments, such as ages and stages, and the DRDP, which are appropriate for our early learners. According to state U uh, UPK implementation guides, it's critical for local education agencies and preschool program partners to plan for how they're going to develop select and select curriculum that is developmentally informed and aligned with the strengths of all students, including our multilingual students and students with disabilities, um, as well as ensure that we have curricula that is implemented with fidelity to support intentional quality instruction for all students, all of our adopted and planned curriculum is aligned with the early education standards. And this is just a list of the curriculum that we are currently implementing and will continue to implement in our TK classrooms. So currently TK is in one classroom at Meadowlark. Um, we do recognize uh, given the projections from Davis demographics that potentially we may need to be looking for additional classrooms as early as the 23-24 school year. Currently, TK students have access to developmentally appropriate learning spaces and playground equipment. Uh, we can equip our classrooms and playgrounds with any necessary adaptive equipment or assessment, assistive technology. And transportation is provided to students who qualify and opt for it. In addition, transportation is provided for students who are participating in the uh, ELOP program, and that would extend, of course, to TK students and continue to do so. so. Our next steps are uh, following the presentation this plan is, is my understanding is that it, the district will receive the survey from the state next month and provide their answers to the questions that our plan actually answers those <laughs> the questions we were asked when we were developing our plan. Any questions? Board member discussion. 
Um, <clears throat> have Have you guys already adopted Frog Street, or is that something you're looking into? We have uh, adopted it. You've already adopted it. Okay. Yes. And then just to be clear for the for the public, the ELOP, you can opt out of ELOP, it's offered, but you're, you can opt out. And also with our district, we don't have to offer it to 100%, isn't it 50%? 50% of the students? And um, I think last week we saw what your policy, what, how you're going to decide which students. Okay, so that they have the nine hours. Okay, thank you. Um, this Davis demographic, did they took, take a look at that? Uh, development that's going in and consider all the water pipes are going across the valley over there. Just a cursory glance of the report, it looked like it, but you know. <laughs> no, they're building a development, there's water pipes laying all over Red Rover Mine Road, and that tells me there's going to be a tract of people over there. And I'm sure they're not going to be some trailer court. And I think there's going to be, uh, hopefully the housing prices are enough so young people that make ADA we, that we won't talk about in the wellness center. Anyway, they're going to have some kids there, and then they'll come in. Has that been included in the projections, or does anybody have any idea when them houses are going to be done so we can fill them with kids, and then we have our own money, and we don't have to depend on charters, and the leg bones connect to the funding bone? We have a, our co a community facilities district, Fund 49, which uh, pays for the attorneys to discuss with the developers, and. At this point, the developers are MIA. They're not returning and calling back, so it's very early stage. Maybe I should get a task force and move some of the water pipes then until they want to call you back. But they were, no, they were not included in the... In the so these projections do not include that. No. So if one kid moves into all them houses, then our ADA will go up one, mm -hmm. and then our kindergarten numbers will start coming up. We met yeah. with the developers with our attorneys over Zoom. I think it was like five or six months ago, we saw the early plans of the housing development, and they're, they're about $4 million. So they're not like entry-level homes, which you're talking about. Yeah. Did you say $4 million? Yeah, they're, they're like upper, like luxury yeah. style homes. Not $4 million. $4 million. Yeah. So even, that's what we, we so I'm not to seeing a lot of behavioral <laughs> problems coming in with these kids. <laughs> so what do you do when the limousines pull into the parking line that we're going to do valet or what, what are we gonna, anyway, just try to get a number on what those houses are going to be, how many they're going to be, and Davis Demographics should be able to give you some kind of there's some frequency distribution that tells you we're going to have some kids coming in. I have another Pam Walter could probably tell us all about it. Well, I can tell you what I know. First phase is 68 homes. The starting price is 1.5 million. Uh, there will be a total of 323 is what I mean. Pam, you want to sit up here? I don't want to sit up here. Yeah, you do. I know you do. I'm going to have you sit up here. Okay. 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 Kenny. She's the only Came one that gets away with calling me that. Kenny? I'm the only one that can call me that. That's right. No, she no. earned it. She earned it. She comes by my house to make sure my kid's all right. Where the rest of y'all? Anyway. Um, I do have another question. So it, for this year, it's a 1 to uh, one to 12 race ratio. Then the following year, it's 1 to 10. So what's our projection for TK for next year? About 7 to 10 students. 7 to 10? So we're good on the ratio. Yeah. Okay. So we don't need to put an instructional aid in the classroom. Okay. Thank you. I'm just trying to figure out what we're going to get flooded by the new house. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Let me figure that out. How many the houses do you sell, Pam? Not Bummer. So next year, the projection is seven to 10 kids, but the following year, we're projecting to need two rooms. So we're expecting a big growth in that area. Hopefully. <laughs> hope, we're hopeful that that's the way it's going. Based on, on the report itself and Davis demographics, a possible need for a second classroom for the outgoing year, the 23-24, yes. Yeah, you can have 12 kids in a room or you can have 12 kids with one adult in a room so then you can have 24 kids with two adults in one room you could. so we're when you say like what from what i'm hearing is that we're going to need two rooms which means that we're going to at least have 30 kids 
So we're growing from seven to 10 kids to 30 kids in a, a span of one year. Is that correct? Nicole, can you go back to that slide to show the number? Sorry, yeah. Let me see. I don't remember, I don't remember what the formula that was on the... Um, I just took the numbers from that Davis... The the report. Uh, okay. yeah, I'm going to share here. They won't speak. If they're not... Okay, I think so I have the right share. So that's showing, showing 16.5 for next year, but what you're saying is 7 to 10 for next year. So are we going off of the Davis demographics or are we going off of the I'm 7 to 10? Off, I'm going off the 7 to 10 based off of our, our P2 and annual attendance. That's the most current figures. That's what I'm going off. So you're going off of what we, what we actually... A more conservative approach, yes, because I'm not seeing that type of volume coming in of the kindergarten roundup or any move. Thank you for taking the conservative approach. I appreciate that. But but the chart is correct because once you get to 26.3, you do need two classrooms because you can't put more than 24 kids in one classroom for TK. So this chart is, is showing the correct, if those numbers do pan out, which would be great, but so when you get to 16.5, you need a teacher with an eight. Uh, Nicole, thank you for your hard work on this. I'm sorry we didn't get to see your see you, but uh, that's okay. Nicole, your slides were beautiful, much better than the ones I saw the other night. <laughs> Had a different board meeting. And thanks, Michelle, for your teach work. On that. Nicole, can you arrange for me to meet that 0.5 kid I'm interested in that? <laughs> no, I feel bad for making the same joke. Thanks, Ken. <laughs> uh, business services, 12. Okay, here's where we have our first amendment to the agenda. We have 12, 12A. A contract with Leadership Associates Strategic Plan 2022 not to exceed $21,250. Motion to consider. Kelly Jensen, Senator. Kelly. Falls, you have second. Ken. Dr. Zahak. Thank you. So, just based on history, back in 2016 2017, Leadership Associates supported the planning process for our district's strategic planning facilitation develop what we what we know now as student achievement 1.0 community engagement 2.0 and so forth so on so i'm seeking board approval for a new contract with leadership associates the same consultants in order uh, for their support to facilitate the strategic planning process with our trustees of course to develop an updated district strategic goal initiative board member discussion Hearing none, call the question. Yeah. No, I just think that um, it's nice to have someone from outside that can lead this work so that it doesn't appear that the, the plan's already been decided. And from what we've heard from the community, they can be a part of it. They can express what they would like to see in our district. The strategic plan is something that moves the district forward so everyone's on the same has, has the same goals. We know which direction we want to move in. It's not coming from the board. It's not coming from the superintendent. It's coming from input of our community. So that's why you would like to have an outside consultant do this work so that it becomes the front of the community. So just so that we're clarifying. Okay, as a point of clarification, this was Cali's presidential year initiative to put a strategic plan together. It was rolled out to the community. Many people participated. Um, it is now what three years yeah it's time to update this and make sure we're on the right track with the lcap and, and take some more input so this is just standard process you've got an object objective person that was familiar with where we were in the first place and then you're just kind of updating it to make sure we're relevant um that's it No further discussion, call the question. Kelly Jensen, aye. Falls, you have aye. Brianna Texoni, aye. Chad Walker, aye. Tim Jordan says aye. Motion carries. Item 12B, local 
indicator self-reflection to L cap motion to consider? A motion. Brianna? Kelly will second. Kelly, Dr. Zahakin. Thank you. As part of the sorry, as part of the adoption for the L cap plan, the local indicator self-reflection tool is requirement for all LEA school districts to complete and report out. And with that, Mr. Mirza? Yeah, it's just a it's not a presentation per se, but it's our local uh, performance indicators on how we are based on stakeholder feedback and our our priority state priorities as far as having access to instructional materials, how our facility inspections are, and how we rate ourselves as a district and what areas that where we can improve on. And so, as we presented to you at the LCAP, our academics were you know our scores suffered quite a bit. We saw a slight increase in math, so we obviously you know kind of rated ourselves according to those results. Um, we had um, on the positive side, we did have 100% facility inspections. We had uh, really good uh, graduation rates, low suspension rates. Our attendance is another area that we continue to struggle on, and so that's another area that when you rate, they have like a rating scale from one to five, one being the lowest and five being the, the highest, and so we get to decide as a district where we see ourselves falling. Right? It's just a compliance item to follow with the LCAP. Board member discussion? Do, do you have that? I haven't seen a hard copy. Yeah, it's, it's right attached. Just quick, quickly go through, oh, mm -hmm. where you rated yourself? Yeah. Can we just uh, slide through them very down. quickly for public? Yeah, they're different um, sections, mm -hmm. so if you keep scrolling. See, it talks about parent and family engagement, and we base that off of our, our surveys and our stakeholder meetings. Self-reflection tools, keep going, keep scrolling, keep going down a little bit. Sorry. This one, so you have to write yourself right, right there. there. Right there, right, right there. there. So Common Core, Academic Standards, ELA, English Learning, Mathematics, uh, five Common Core Standards, meaning our progress in making that we're rating ourselves a five, but academically, we are struggling in that area. Yeah, because you're giving yourself a five that you're talking about common court academic standards scroll down. We're fully implementing it, but we have a lot of it. Mm -hmm. I think you see the ratings here where it says like we're exploring uh, beginning development. All of our academics are in full implementation mode. It's just that we could definitely improve our scores. Correct. So right here, career technical education. Uh, we talked about you know bringing additional programs in as far as Pax and Patterson Lab, the carpenters. So kind of rating ourselves like we're just beginning that development phase of it, and we could continue uh, continue to expand. We talked about visual performing arts. You guys approved the arts plan last. Uh, board meetings, so that's why we're kind of making ourselves like we have a few yes. arts programs mm -hmm. that we still have room to grow. Looking at some of these, I would think you guys were pretty hard on yourself. Okay. Just, mm -hmm. Try to say how, how we feel. <laughs> Which means you have high expectations. School climate, scroll down. The school climate um, it just kind of talks about our 100 percent in our facilities and then our climate and culture is based off of our um our results that we received from our students family and parents okay. the feedback that we got so would you say that it's important to to um respond to surveys that we actually really look at the surveys so when people think they don't have a voice and they think we're just getting on another survey it's important to this kind of work. And when we talk about strategic plans, we talk about the LCFF, the LCAP, and all of those things, it's really important for our community to just take a moment to respond to some of these surveys because they mean a lot to our district as to programs and things that we're doing. Would yes. you agree? Yes, I agree. So, um, 
you have any deficiency notice of corrective findings or action demands from LACO on this? No. Would you say that um, the discretionary funding that you have, you're trying to focus uh, towards most need? Yes. Would you say that we find the rolling out, meaningfully rolling out EL? Yes. It, it, it finally being, finally, we're the second oldest school district and just happened this year. Yeah, look at that. When you want to talk about what the school is doing, that's what I'm looking at. I don't make everybody happy, but that's what I'm looking at. So, and Mr. Mirza, I'm, a, I'm familiar with this idea where you rate yourself low, and then next year your numbers go up, and then you look like zero. Thank you. That's it. Next. Um. They got it, dude. They got it. <laughs> um, I do. It's a problem. We have, we have to implement things that we need to engage our community and partner with. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's a, it's a live document. It's, it's constantly up for assessment. Thank you, guys. I have nothing else. Good Thank you for your good work. Let's uh, call the question. Kelly Jensen, aye. Falls, you got aye. Brianna Texoni, aye. Chad Walker, aye. Kim Jorgensen, aye. 12, moves. 12C, LCAP adoption. Motion to consider. So moved. Kelly Jensen, yes. Chad seconds. Dr. Zahakian. Sure. At the, last, at the last board meeting, we had a formal presentation of the LCAP plan for adoption. So it's recommended that the Board of Trustees approve the plan and adopt the L LCAP plan for our district, please. Board member discussion? Hearing none, call the question. Kelly Jensen, aye. Balls, you have aye. Brianna Texoni, aye. Chad Walter, aye. Tim Jorgensen, aye. Motion carries. 12D, 2022-23 budget adoption. Motion to consider. A motion. Brianna. Kelly Jensen, second. Kelly. Dr. Zahakian. So I want to just publicly thank Mr. Mirza again for his um, budget presentation and his team for the 22-23 budget. Uh, it's, it's our recommendation that the Board of Trustees adopt the budget moving forward for 22-23 for our district, please. Board member discussion. Mr. Mirza, what does your forecast look like for the next three years? Are you in negative certification? We are not. Is there any indicator that that we won't be in positive certification? No. That we won't be able to pay our bills? No. How much charter revenue did you get this year? About 1% of the total. Did revenue. you make more than what it cost you to supply the services? No. So how could you, when you were getting 4 and $5 million a few years ago, not you, I think you were at a prison taking care of people that were doing that before. I know, I know what I'm saying. Don't, don't kid yourself. I always know what I'm saying. At the end of the day, how is it that you're surviving without the charter revenue? I already know the answer. Never mind. It was a rhetorical question. Thank you for filling for Thank you. 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 Thank Thank you for your hard work on this. That's all I have. As always, Dr. Money, you're spot on. So thank you for your diligent work. Did you get that degree yet, Doc? Not yet. Keep up the good work. I appreciate you and your staff putting this together. No further discussion. Call the question. Kelly Jensen, aye. Falls Jeff, aye. Brianna Texoni, aye. Chad Watsworth, aye. Tim Jorgensen, aye. Motion carries 5-0. 12E, CCTV system and intercoms at all sites. Motion to consider. Chad. I'm oh, sorry, Mr. Mirza has anything that he wants to add to this. Well, doctor, did you say Oh, I did it. Just. Are you taking appointments? Okay, I want to check. Board member discussion? Kelly? Okay. No, discussion. Hearing none. Oh, I, I didn't know if you were done. So this is so we can keep our front doors at all of our sites locked. 
and office staff would be able to buzz people in. They would be able to communicate back and forth with somebody standing outside before they get buzzed in. Yeah, so they'll have a they'll have a separate monitor where you can see who's coming in and out and be able to talk to them and buzz them in. Thank you. I'm, I'm glad to see that we're upgrading because we're in a remote area. If we need assistance, it's 20, 30 minutes away. So I'm glad that we're providing staff with that additional student safety security where they can say, how can I help you? And why are you here? No, nope, we didn't order pizza. Sorry, go away. That uh, I know when I work at Cal State Bakersfield, I go to a lot of the campuses on in the AB district and they all have something similar to this. And even though they know me, I have to buzz in. They go through the process, so there's always that security on campus. I have one more question. When is this expected to be implemented? Will we have it before school starts in August? That's the hope. So after today, um, we're going to pass this over to Ernesto, our maintenance director, and he's going to get right on it and try to get it implemented and on time for the start of school. Thank you. Are you confident with that? Because I want to be able to make campaign promises. No, I'm not okay. confident with that. <laughs> We're going to try. Call the question. Kelly Jensen, aye. Paul Schrapp, aye. Brianna Texoni, aye. Chad Walter, aye. Tim Jorgensen, aye. Motion carries. 12F, bus yard security system. Motion to consider. Kelly Jensen, aye. I'll second. second. And Brianna seconds. Dr. Zahaki. Uh, we've recently had some catalytic converter issues, as some of us know, and um, with that and some new buses on their way or here, we're looking to go ahead and upgrade a security system which will have a laser detection system for the bus yard. So, this works on. Board member discussion. <laughs> laser detection, are we going to... Please be in the Please out. Take motion to take motion. So, when is this going to go in? Uh, they're already uh, they started the fence, and so. So, I mean, I can't get to the buses as take the rest of the converters before you get it finished. Yeah, no. Okay. <laughs> no further discussion? Call the question. Kelly Johnson, aye. It's Paul Giraffe, aye. Brianna Texoni, aye. Chad Walter, aye. Tim Jorgensen, aye. Motion carries. 12G, five year copier printer lease for Acton Agridose Unified School District. Motion to consider. A motion. Brianna. Chad seconds. Dr. Sapien. Mr. Mirza does a great job of vetting for you know the best pricing when it comes to contracts, so I commend him for that. This is a five-year five lease for all copiers, printers for all sites, school sites, including the DO, and when I say all sites, classrooms as well, printers and, 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 and copiers. So, board member discussion? Hearing none, call the question. Kelly Jensen, aye. Balls, you have aye. Brianna Texoni, aye. Chad Walter, aye. Tim Jensen, aye. Motion carries 5-0. 12H resolution number 2021-22.19 authorizing use of remote teleconferencing provisions AB361. Motion to consider. A motion. Second. Brianna. Who, who's seconding? Kelly second. Kelly. Dr. Zaki. This is the for, for our board meetings to continue with the option of Zoom, of course, hybrid, Zoom as well as in person. Moving forward. Board member discussion. Hearing none, call the question. Kelly Jensen, aye. Paul Schrapp, aye. Brianna Texoni, aye. Chad Wazler, aye. Tim Jorgensen, aye. Motion carries. Item 13, calendar information, Dr. Zahakian. Uh, just a correction to what, what we have on the agenda. Regular meeting of a of school board will be August 11th, not August 14th, as printed. Have discussion. When are, we have discussion. Have discussion? when are we going to have a special board meeting to take care of the unaddressed uh, personnel report that was not that died on the vine tonight? When do we need to do that so we can keep our, our school staff? 
I think that somebody from the superintendent's office, I, I'm used to you making competent recommendations for hire. I don't want to get out in the weeds. I don't want to talk about how many band-aids my grandma has on her corns or anything like that. But we have people, we have people who need to go to work and we need to get this addressed. So I would suggest that somebody from the district office reach out, get this resolved, and then call a special board meeting so we can make sure everybody knows that they got a good job tomorrow. And in, in, in the next discussion, we won't be discussing people's personal medical history and when they're going to come off back and when they're not. That's why I left the dais. So can we look at our calendars and figure out when we're going to have the next board meeting? We could probably have it in 15 minutes because it could be an emergency board meeting. I don't know. Any other board member discussion? Do we need to go to closed session? Do you need to go to closed session and get this worked out, come back out and reopen it? I make a motion that board members that wish to go into closed session to discuss this for the further information they need without violating HIPAA and FERPA laws, go back there and then come back out. Maybe we can discuss this and get the vote made tonight. I'll second. Thank you. Call the question on, on uh, hold on, Rihanna, seconded, Ken, motion to adjourn for closed session to consider the warrant register item. It's a personal action report. Uh, excuse me, the part of report. Call the question. Kelly. Kelly Jensen, aye. Paul Jarrett, aye. Brianna Texoni, aye. Chad Walter, uh, Tim Jordan tonight. Motion carries. We'll turn briefly for closed session. General Cameron, we're going to return to the regular agenda closed session, return for closed session at 11, 11 21. And the report out from the action that was taken in closed session is, is that the action is, is that we're going to reconsider the PAR as presented and vote on the PAR report. Kelly Jensen, so moved. Kelly moves. Chad seconds. Board member discussion. Hearing none, call the question. Kelly Jensen, aye. Falls, you have aye. Brianna Texoni, aye. Chad Wadsworth, aye. Tim Jorgensen, aye. The motion carries by zero. Future agenda items. Will board member or Dr. Sock in future agenda items? I have something to add. I do too. I do okay, let's too. go down the list. Kelly, you have anything? Yeah. Ken? Um, I would like to, I'm on my charter rant. I would like to, it seems like we only hear from our charters. I'm not interested in hearing a report from the, um, from the charter director uh, because the financial aspect of it tells me everything I need to know. But what usually happens is you're going to have renewals coming up and uh and material revisions and things and i would like to start inviting our charter people in just to say hi the people that that we made our agreements with just to bring them and say hello and then what we can do is just have them give us an update or say whatever it is they want to say right um and i think i would like to start with the boundary in in boundary charters and I think I would like to start with the charters that have the biggest boundary enrollment, which means I would like to see um, Dawn and Amber from ILEAD come in and say hi and tell us what's going on. I think there's a spot for this under the, uh, the superintendent's report. It's kind of an informal thing like that. So instead of having submittals, uh, which we don't seem to have any, it's just hi, say hi to our charter partners. They don't have to come in if they don't want to. I'll second that. Thank you. So we should call that one to question. 
Kelly Simpson, I. Wait, oh, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Call the question for charter renewal presentations yeah. in district first, largest to smallest. Second, uh, who, who moved? Can move. Can move. Second. Brianna, second. Call the question. Kelly Jensen, aye. Paul Brianna Texoni, aye. Chad Wadsworth, aye. Tim Jorgensen, aye. Uh, Brianna, anything? Um, I would like a report on the wellness clinic that everybody's talking about. I would specifically like to see the difference or to hear the difference um, between the wellness center and the wellness clinic. I believe these two are getting muddled together. Um, wellness clinic or wellness center has been a discussion on our campuses for a while. We started building a wellness center just before COVID at High Desert. That's now the CTE lab or the Paxton Patterson lab. Um, so that went away. But I believe that we're, we're merging them together. Um, and I would like a report of what each one of them is and the differences and what is currently on our campus um, and what is being discussed on our campus, are we actually bringing it to our campus? I'll second that. Um, just while we're discussing this, I need to know that the planned public outreach meetings that you've had, mm -hmm. I would suggest that we have at least one more of those uh, before we go into informed discussion because I don't need a free for all. Um, Chad, you were very humble about uh, your involvement in the meeting. We were hearing some stuff that I was going, Ugh. and when I go, Ugh, it's pretty crazy. So um, Chad was in the meeting, and I was in the meeting, and um, I think we would have one more superintendent discussion, invite everybody to come in and give their input, as they did, and then have the meeting. I'll support what Brianna wants to do. Absolutely, and if I could just, just chime in really quick. The reason why it hasn't been brought forward formally as a report or presentation to the trustees of the community is for the fact that I'm just gauging the, the need, number one, um, and, 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 and the purpose if would it actually serve our community here for Vasquez and the community as a whole. So we've had a, two Zoom meetings. Um, I, I take it back. We had a Tuesday talk Zoom meeting and an in-person at Vasquez. Um, with a low turnout, but um, I'm more than happy to uh, set up a third one so that we could clarify between Wellbeing Center, LACO, and then Wellness Center that's been established by Councilors and Vasquez. So, I just want to be clear. I'm not. I don't want to force you into bringing a presentation to the school to the board before you're ready. Um, what I was asking for was clarification on the difference between the two and what do we currently have on our campus and just some clarification yeah. for what everybody's talking sure. about like um, to the board. Yeah. yeah so if you're not ready to bring a what did you call it a wellness it, the lake one and dpa just called well-being well-being well -being center correct. so there's a wellness center and a yeah, well-being well center correct. so if you're not ready to bring a presentation on a well-being center yet that's that's okay. fine um, just the difference between the wellness center sure. and the well-being center problem. would be awesome. Not a problem. So typically what happens is if we, we put something on the agenda, it's staff's um, prerogative to figure out when it's fully baked to bring that forward. Um, I will say that it's come a long way in discussion from people, people being picked up for a 5150 and calling that county support. But we can always go back to that. Uh, but they don't force things on us to, that we don't want. So I think the discussion, I think I would carry that on the future agenda items report. And when you're ready to talk to, but I'm going to be asking questions about how many people participated. I'm going to want to know more about board member um, involvement. The synopsis you gave your, uh, of what you heard there, Chad, that we need more of that. Call a question. Kelly Jensen, I. Falls your up, I. Brianna, I. Chad Wadsworth, I. Tim Jorgensen, I. Mr. Wadsworth. Uh, my request is that um, for the public's knowledge is um, a hours of operation for the district office. Uh, what times our three superintendents tend to work, Monday through Friday, whatever, nine to 
five, 10 to two, whatever the number is. So the public uh, is aware of when you guys are here and when they're not uh, along with um, your staff that's inside this office would be great just for public um, trust. Anybody second it? Uh, I'll second. Can I add to that as well? Sure. Which employees are working from the office and which employees are working from home? Which positions? I don't need employee names, but the actual position working from home or working from the office. And then I will second. Do, discussion. Do we have currently have people work still working from home? On a regular basis? Not on a regular basis, no. So currently they're supposed to be in in house work. Correct. We did have during COVID we allowed some work from home. Yes. So currently the assignment is they're they're working in house. Correct. Okay. And when you said that wait, yeah, okay. yeah. So I think maybe yeah, like yeah. I, could I have yours that hey, you like an organizational flow chart saying here's here's the people, the staff, general whatever by number. Or just by title of position, not person. So I've been discussing with my immediate team and Mr. Colley, of course, Mr. Shaw and Mr. Mears about a functional organizational chart. Yeah. So that's something that's in the works as well. So okay. Thank you. Call the question. Kelly Jensen, aye. Falls draft, no. Brianna Texoni, aye. Chad Walter, aye. Jason Jorgensen, aye. Motion carries four or one. Item fifteen, adjournment. Do I have a motion to consider adjournment? A motion. Chad Sagriano. Chad. Discussion. Hearing none, call the question. Kelly Jensen, aye. Falls Drive, aye. Brianna Texoni, aye. Chad Walter, aye. Tim Jorgensen, aye. Motion to carry. We'll adjourn at 11.30 p.m. <laughs>